Well, this has all been part of Texas Governor Greg Abbott's pressure campaign to send a Biden to send a message rather to the Biden administration that they need to control the influx of migrants that we're seeing coming across the border, particularly as it looks at rolling back Title 42. This eighth bus arriving, about a dozen people, probably a little less than a dozen people on board, as you mentioned, from Congo, uh, Venezuela, but also Haiti, Cuba, and Brazil, which I found to be quite remarkable because uh, earlier this year we saw Haitian migrants deported under Title 42 and even put on planes back to their country of origin. All of this, though, uh, to say that we are now a couple blocks away from where those migrants were dropped off. They were shepherded by local aid organizations. We have seen Human Rights Watch, Catholic Charities, the Salvation Army, all on hand to receive these migrants to help them get to their final destinations. Some of those migrants on the bus decided to get off in Birmingham, Alabama, to then go on to Miami. Uh, that's been sort of a sticking point. These buses have the capacity to carry 40 people, but there's really only been about a couple dozen. They've taken Abbott up on his offer for a free ride to Washington, D.C., because when they've crossed the border, they don't have any money to get to their final destination. This was an opportunity for them to do so. I've previously asked them how they felt about being part of a political message. They said, we know we're a prop. Uh, but this is an opportunity for us to get to where we need to go. There were four small children on that bus that had traveled a very long way, 34-hour bus ride from the Texas border to Washington, D.C., here, the nation's capital. And a lot of these migrants are also going on to New York. We also spoke with that other migrant earlier that said he was going on to Portland, Maine. So very much people traveling to the Northeast. All of this continues to be debated on Capitol Hill. Uh, Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema of Arizona he has even put forward legislation pushing the Biden administration to come up with a comprehensive plan before it rolls back Title 42 and only after it declares an ending to the federal national emergency around the pandemic. So pressure has been mounting on the Biden campaign. We were reporting yesterday that members of his inner circle were talking about yep. delaying this. Obviously, a bit of a conflict from what we're hearing from the White House press secretary. But the pressure is on at this yeah, point, Yeah, excellent Rob. reporting, Kilmeny. And by the way, you know, you could say, fine, these, these people, these immigrants are being used as political props. They, they volunteered to get on board those buses, uh, those eight buses that have taken them from Texas to, uh, to our nation's capital. I, I, that is news to me. So several of the immigrants decided to get off in Alabama, and they will now make their way south to Miami, where they will apparently wait for their, their court dates there. Is that, is that what you were saying? Correct, Rob. And that would change from the first bus that I greeted that had arrived in the nation's capital. There were a lot more people on that particular bus. Catholic Charities was there, uh, but those people had stayed on the bus. They had arrived in Washington, D.C., and a lot of them were continuing on to Miami, where they were going to be getting on another 30-hour bus ride. The Department of Homeland Security, they take their uh, national IDs and they give them paperwork. So at that point, they can't board a plane, they can't board a train. Um, but all of this is very much connected to sort of the conflicting uh, theories on, on sort of is this pandemic over? Republicans have yeah, cried foul point. on this because they say, why is it over at the border, but we're extending the federal transportation mask mandate? Yeah, and you asked several of these immigrants um, what their vaccine status was, had they been vaccinated. Um, I understand there's a language barrier, but but the two people that you spoke with didn't seem to know really what you were referencing. Um, and, and one gentleman actually said, I don't speak English very well, but when you asked him where he was going in perfect English, this gentleman from the Congo which is in the central part of Africa, made it very clear that he's on his way to Portland, Maine. Um, pretty unbelievable stuff. But that's just a glimpse into Joe Biden's America and where we've gone in a very short period of time. Kilmeny Dukart, thanks so much for the update. We appreciate it out there in Washington for us this morning uh, covering uh, that breaking news this morning.